to kick the globalists that have blackmailed the, the Vatican into accepting a Jesuit pope, into accepting a pope that promotes socialism and communism and open borders and carbon taxes and world government. And the pope has come out and said that the main threat, and he warned against conspiracy theories of Vatican skullduggery, is the headline from AFP. We can put that up uh, on screen for folks. And so as soon as I saw this, I thought, we've got to get Leo Zagami on, because to have this pope basically saying the opposite of what Pope John Paul II said or what the previous pope said, you can criticize the Vatican all day long. I'm not Catholic. I'm just a Christian. I have a lot of Catholic friends. And there was a lot of criticism of the church over the years, and I wouldn't join in on it because the Catholic church was pro-life and anti-communist. But now you can really say that the pope is promoting the globalist agenda. Hands down. And the fact that they would have a secret meeting it actually admits in the news that it was a private meeting. And then he warned them against conspiratorial thinking. So see, they don't want anybody talking about what's even been in the New York Times, the London Guardian, that the church was blackmailed three years ago when Ratzinger left and went to Castle Gandalf. And I'm not joking, that's not a Lord of the Rings joke. The castle's called Gandalf. And so you now got two popes, basically. First time ever. And you've got all this weirdness going on. You've got the left suddenly that wanted to demonize the Catholic Church, suddenly worshiping it. What's changed? What's happened? But we know there's a big conservative pushback in the church. He's demoted a lot of people that aren't playing ball. So there is definitely a civil war going on over the future of the Catholic Church. Joining us is Leo Zagami from Rome in the middle of the night over there. What time is it, Leo, your time, Rome? Well, it's uh, nearly half past 12. Uh, hello, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us, my friend. Um, you Again, for those that just joined us, predicted, you've written the best-selling book, The Last Pope. You've written other books, written, I guess, nine, ten books. Uh, you've been part of some of the Vatican secret societies. Uh, you began blowing the whistle a decade ago because you thought the societies were for good. You realized that it was had been taken over and was for bad. Um, so just recapping that... How big a deal is it that the Pope's having secret meetings with the leadership of the church saying, don't think about conspiracies? And that's what Obama says, is what they all say. Conspiracy theorists are such jokes, but they're all meeting in secret saying, oh my gosh, we're being questioned. I mean, isn't that all a conspiracy theory is, is questioning these people and admitting they have motives and admitting there's different groups and organizations? Why is the Pope so scared of this? And what does this signify, Leo Zagami? Well, the exact words have been uh, by, uh, reported by Father Lombardi, who is the official spokesman of the Vatican, who is another Jesuit. The hermeneutics of conspiracy, meaning the interpretation of conspiracy. Uh, usually this is a phrase used to interpret uh, some, uh, you know, abstruse text. But in this case, uh, um, Pope Francis is really warning his bishops because he's afraid that uh, people like me or other uh, people like you uh, who have given and finally, the possibility to people to know the truth about what's going on behind closed doors in the Vatican are influencing in some way the synod. Because uh, by uh, writing what I uh, wrote a week ago on Infowars uh, regarding the coming out of Father Karamsa and actually stating that the lobby gay was behind it, uh, this stirred up a lot of trouble because a lot of media are reporting this now, this reality of the lobby gay. Such is it that Father Karamsa came out today on the Italian TV saying... Talk about a cliffhanger. Our Skype from Rome just froze Excuse up. Hold on, Leo, while your Skype clears back up. For those that don't know, there is a pedophile lobby in the Vatican. There is then a, a gay lobby in the Vatican. And, and Zagami says those are two separate groups. And it's been admitted those groups are there. Then you've got a conservative lobby. And then you've got the Jesuits that just basically try to run every group, every organization, and have full-spectrum dominance that way. And they admit, mainstream news, you can just type in Vatican blackmailed into new pope. And they were blackmailed. They were told, you step down or the media is going to bring all this out and the cover-up. Now the cover-up's okay. Now um, 
Pope Francis can have one of the chief, you know, disgraced uh, bishops, you know, at the event in Philadelphia, and that's okay. Because the church has done what it's told and gone into the new world order. Uh, is that accurate to say? It's something even much more uh, that is happening these days in Rome. What Once I'm going to tell you what's happening now in that synod of bishops, you will be outraged. Uh, I mean, there is, first of all, I have discovered who was manipulating this whole coming out of Father Kama, uh, Ka Karamsa. And he is called Emilio Sturla Turno with an organization that you can go and check on the internet. It's called the Rainbow Organization of Catholics. This Rainbow Organization of Catholics uh, had organized just before the synod of opening a conference called Ways of Love, Snapshots of Catholic Encounters with LGBT, which is uh, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons and their families. Now, uh, in this uh, conference, there has been a bishop, a Mexican bishop called Jose Raul Vera Lopez, who said uh, text, uh, these words, the uh, gay will save the church. This was said by a the bishop of Saltillo in Mexico, said during the conference, the gay will save the church. I mean, this is outrageous. And not only this, in the synod, in front of the Pope, another bishop from another town in Italy instead, called uh, Foggia, uh, this guy said that the gays will bring only richness to the church. So basically, there is a whole organization that has been lobbied the synod, and they actually have their own websites, and they are all controlled by of course, by Jesuits. And uh, one of the most important Jesuits in the U.S. to take care of all this is called Robert Spitzer. Have you ever heard of uh, this guy, Alex? Yes, I've heard about him from you. Of, uh, he's been on CNN many times, on the History Channel, many other media. He's uh, the responsible for the university, Jesuit universities in the U.S. And he has been behind another conference that took place on Friday, October the 2nd, in which the more moderate side of the gay lobby, uh, uh, the so-called caste side of the gay lobby, uh, kind of opposed what uh, the rainbow side is saying. The rainbow side is basically uh, the stronger side in the gay lobby these days, they are saying they want complete openness. So the church has to become openly involved with the homosexual activities in the clergy, accepting them. And all this is sponsored by organizations that you can find on the internet created by the Catholic Church, like NAPA or Courage. And as I said, I invite the, your, your sure. viewers to go and check these websites. Leo Zagami, stay there. Long segment coming up. I want to give the number out for folks have any questions or comments for you specifically on what's happening in the Catholic Church, 877-789-ALEX. Stay with us. Leo Zagami is our guest. We'll be back. Leo Zagami is our guest. we got lots of phone calls for him. Again, the toll-free number is 877-789-ALEX. I'm going to be honest with everybody because that's all I can do. And as older I get, the more flat out I get. I am a libertarian at heart. I also am, you know, somebody that grew up in modern times. I've studied history. I don't dislike, quote, gay people. And I'll even use their politically correct term if they want to take over the language and say that's what it is. Heterosexual, homosexual, whatever. But the left and its culture war and political correctness is using this to break up the family. And they have used pedophilia and then the gay lobby and blackmail to basically take over the Catholic Church. And they've had gay lobbies before, and Rome's declined before, and other civilizations. This is what happens before the collapse. And the New Yorker magazine has reported on it. London Guardian has reported on it. This is about taking over an organization that a billion people follow that has trillions and trillions of dollars, 177 million acres, this is how the intrigue works. This is blackmail. And the gay lobby, you know, doesn't have children. It doesn't, any of that stuff. It just gives political contributions. It's all about power. It's leftist and it's taking everything over. So I don't have to sit here and say, look, I don't hate people that are this way because most people involved in that obviously aren't part of this. But the leadership of it and who speaks for you is really bad news. And is trying to conquer civilization. And it is political. It's very dark. It's very destructive. 
Now, Leo Zagami, I know we've gone off of the fact that this is the takeover of the church, but I wanted to get you on how big a deal it is that the Pope comes out and says, the big threat is people questioning us, investigating us, talking about blackmail, talking about secret groups. I mean, really, that begs the question, uh, me thinks you protest too much. This really shows that they want to call questioning authority a conspiracy theory. That doesn't work anymore. So how is it going for Pope Francis? Is it going well? Is it going bad? What's the next big shoe to drop? I'm giving you a word scoop. You are about to hear a word scoop. The Pope will resign next year after his visit to Argentina. Okay, that's big because two years before the scandal started five years ago, you said a Jesuit pope would take over and mentioned two men, one of them this pope, and said they'd use the pedophile scandal to take over. That then came out in mainstream news. So you've been proven right many times. You're saying world scoop. Are you predicting this from the tea leaves or do you have inside sources? No, no, no. This is uh, inside sources, two different inside sources, one from the Secretary of State of the Vatican, the other one from the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, saying that the Pope will use uh, the visit to his uh, home place, I mean, uh, Argentina, to make a in a way, preparing the way for his coming back to Argentina, because apparently he doesn't want to reside after in Castel Gandolf or in the Vatican. He wants to simply... Uh, retire in Argentina. That's uh, uh, what is being said. And as you so said five years ago when you wrote a separate book, they want to set it where a pope doesn't come in and then die. It's a political post so they can jockey and put a, different people in all the time, have two popes, then move the pope to be a council of popes. I mean, explain why they want to do that. Well, there is a, a big work going on here between the Jesuit and the Zionist lobby and the gay lobby. In fact, this Emilio Sturla Turno, who uh, took care of the coming out of Father Caramsa, he actually is homosexual lover, is an Israeli intelligence asset. So uh, the, the lobby gay works together with the Israeli intelligence and the Jesuits in this coming out of the gay lobby in the church. And all this, of course, uh, is uh, uh, being fought by some conservatives. Imagine this, the cardinal of uh, Riga in uh, Lettonia went in front of the uh, Lettonian parliament and said, Giannis Francis Puyat, this cardinal said, basically we were better off with Hitler and Stalin because the European Union is supporting sodomite and they are a bunch of sodomites. This is what a Catholic cardinal just said yesterday, Giannis Francis Puyat. Uh, so, I mean, there is also some conservative... Well, this is bombshell, Leo Zagami, because, you know, you're... You're famous in Italy, you're famous in Europe, for folks that don't know, best-selling author, you're on national television there, you're, you're highly respected, you do have inside sources of the Vatican, you have predicted everything that's happened when no one else was doing it. I mean, you, you really have a lot of credibility here. And you've well, been part of you know, some of these high-level secret societies. You're saying, you have been told from high level in the Vatican that the Pope will resign next year. This is bombshell. You've really stuck your neck out here. Flesh that out more exactly what you were told. I was said that during his uh, visit uh, that he will do uh, next year in South America, which will include, I think, Chile, uh, Argentina, and Peru, uh, he will basically, this will happen approximately, I think, in July of next year, but I mean, just when he goes to Argentina, which uh, as we know, he comes from there, he will announce that he will resign. Uh, so, I mean, this uh, has been confirmed by two different sources within the Vatican. Uh, I went especially to Rome to hear in closed doors what they had to say to me. I believe these sources are credible because one is a personal knight of the Pope. The other one works together with the I mean, I think that this information is pretty correct. It seems like I, when I asked them why is the Pope resigning, he said he has accomplished his mission for the New World Order. From 2016, the New World Order at that point is already in a process, you know, is already launched itself with 2030, with the whole thing we have seen uh, just with the Pope going to the U.S. and everything else. So it seems like he has done his job and then he wants to retire. That, I mean, it's very hard for him. We saw how fatigued he was when he was in in Philadelphia. I mean, he was really going along with this leg very much in pain. So he's really working for the New World Order until he, he is capable. And then he will Because decide. it's about removing the power of the Pope and the Catholic Church. Yes. It's about whether it was good or bad. It's about seeding it out to the globalist, bringing it down, breaking it down, breaking its will, 
using different cults, different secret groups to take it over.